after a mother's visit to a distant land. This is so beautiful. Turns violent. No begging. He just pushed him down and started kicking. Get off! Her daughter begins feeling watched at home. It was like that feeling when you know someone's there. It was a ghost, a spirit. A mysterious intruder lurks. And she is not at peace. I was like constantly terrified. I was really scared. In America, there is real evil. It lurks in the darkest shadows and in our most ordinary towns. Between the worlds we see Someone's in my room. and the things we fear, there are doors when they are opened. Nightmares become reality. For months, 15-year-old Kara Dravis has been having otherworldly experiences in her home. It's like that feeling when you know someone's there, when you can just tell. I didn't know if something was gonna grab me. I was like terrified. I kept telling myself, this isn't real. You're imagining it. You're imagining it. In the summer of 2010, Kara's mother, Linda Dravis, lands in New Delhi, India, drops off her bags, and heads over to her favorite marketplace. I am an international in-flight manager for a major airline, major US carrier. Oh, this is so beautiful. How much? 100 rupees. I was going there three times a month, and I was out in the markets, looking at all this jewelry. And I started bringing back a little bit for my friends. Miss Linda, Miss Linda! Ravi, is that you? Hello, Miss Linda, I missed you. I was hoping I'd see you this trip. Ravi's a street kid, and there's a whole bunch of them. They were my little friends on the street. Can you help me with my bags? I would love to, Miss Linda. I think he just liked to walk with me and talk. So beautiful. Come on, 
on, Robbie. Let's go someplace else. How many times have I told you no begging, huh? He's not begging. He's with me. I'm like, no, 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 no. I've known him for two years. He's never stolen anything from me or begged. Madam, you go do your shopping and you leave him to me, OK? okay. Come here with me. <laughs> you never listen to me ever, do you? Bobby! Do you have a problem listening? <laughs> Come back in. Now you want to run away from me? Get off of him! Please, Get off! Please, Please off it! No, don't Get have off. me! I need no, nobody! Get off him! Get off him! Get off him! Run! Run! Get back here! I told you, he was helping me. He's garbage and should not be in this market. What's wrong with you? These kids are lower cased. I don't think they want other nationalities, Americans, tourists socializing with them or being friends with them. It was very upsetting to see a human being treated like that. A few days later, Linda is back at her home in Stewart, Florida a stark contrast to India. Hey, sweetie. How's school? It's OK. Got an A on my science test. That's awesome. I knew your studying would pay off. I was a single mom. I never had any issues with Kara. She knew I was doing my best uh, being a mother and father, and she tried to make it easy for me. How was your trip? This is pretty. I got that one for you. We had a pretty good relationship. My dad left when I was little, so we've always been pretty close. I talked to her about everything. Here, let me put it on. My trip was interesting. You know Ravi, the boy that helps me in the market? He got in trouble because of me. Because of you? He's an untouchable. In his culture, he's not allowed to talk to people like me. We live very fortunate lives. Never forget that. I know, Mom, because you tell me every time. I love you. One night, while Linda is expected home late from a flight, Kara and her friend find themselves alone. Look at him. We were talking, just laughing. I remember we were talking about a specific boy. And she look at him with his friends. Mm -hmm. Just not a care in the world. He looks like a dark. He is. <laughs> He's so dorky. Oh, I almost forgot. My mom got this for you on her last trip. It's so pretty. Thank you. Do you think uh, Jason might notice it? I hope so. What was that? Uh, what are you talking about? I thought I heard something. Yes, my mom's home. Mom? Alexa, it's not funny.
And she looked at him with his friends. Mm -hmm. One night while home alone, Kara and her friend experienced the scare of their lives. like a woman, but I couldn't tell you where it was coming from. That was the worst part. Kara, are you all right? What, what happened? What was that noise? I don't know. I think there's someone in the house. Where are the knives? Top, top door. I thought someone's there to harm us. What was that sound? I think someone's coming. We were terrified. Her mom came in, in the door and she was upset. What is going on, girls? I have been knocking for like five minutes. Oh, the, we, we, there was this thought, voice and the we, laughing and we thought somebody was in the house. What in the world? It is very late. You need to stop watching those scary movies. Lexa, are you ready to go? Uh, I'm coming to you. Did you check with your mom? Oh, just at least text her. I didn't want to be home alone. I was like, I'm getting out of here. I knew there was someone in my house. Lexa, where's your bag? It's in Kara's room. I'm, I'm not going to get it. Girls, this is ridiculous. There is no one in this house. Lexa, go get your backpack now. If you're coming with us, let's go. Kara's mother is surprised to find she's not home. I was upset. I said, Kara, I just talked to you an hour ago. You're supposed to be home. You can stay at Lexa's now because you've already made her mom come out once, but I want you home at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. The next morning, Linda confronts her daughter. Mom, I don't understand. It's not fair. I'm not gonna have you scaring yourself like that anymore. I accused her of watching scary movies, which made them freak out. I said, Kara, grab up all those scary movies. We're throwing these in the trash. After playing the event over and over in her mind, Kara makes a realization. Mom, you don't understand. There was something in the house. It was laughing at us. We weren't even watching scary movies. I told my mom that I realized that it wasn't a lady. There was no lady in my house. No one had taken anything. It was, it was a ghost. There was something there, a spirit. You're being ridiculous. There's nothing in this house. No more movies. And you know what? 
No riding lessons for a month either. Mom! I'm like, Kara, I need to be able to rely on you. You need to grow up. You need to be responsible. How can I do this if you are not on my team? It was just really hard because she didn't believe me. It was just a feeling that I was gonna see something or hear something else. And I was like constantly terrified. I was really scared. Fifteen-year-old Kara Dravis is being tormented by a mysterious being in her home. It was just a feeling that I was going to see something or hear something else. And I was, like, constantly terrified. I was really scared. saw it opening and I'm like, oh God, oh no, oh no, oh no. I was terrified. She was scared to death, and I was trying to remain calm. Are you sure? Why don't you believe me? There was something in the house the night that Lexa was here, and it's still here. I knew something was there. Like, I was, I was positive. All right, all right, I don't know what's going on, but I'll figure it out, okay? I'll figure it out. I said there was a logical explanation I will find out what it is. I don't want you to worry about it. Leave it up to me. Determined to get to the bottom of what's going on, Linda contacts a home safety expert. I did everything I could to find a logical explanation, including a spy surveillance company. We're gonna figure it out. So I've been through every inch of this house and can't find anything that could have made that noise. The spy surveillance company basically told me it was highly unlikely that somebody could have broken in and then gotten out with nobody knowing.
I was trying to act like everything was normal, but I didn't know what to think. Kara? All of a sudden, I was nervous, really nervous. I just felt like there was something really watching me. But Linda, an international flight attendant, has been working long hours. I'm working my butt off. I don't have time for this nonsense. You know, I figured I'm imagining it. I was all alone in my house, and I felt something. For weeks, Kara Dravis has been sensing a presence in her home. Strange noises. A woman's laugh. <laughs> a door opening on its own. Now, it's her mother's turn. Hera? <laughs> that sounded unworldly. I don't know where it was coming from. It was just everywhere. It was scary. <laughs> Kara? Mom? What's wrong? I heard it. I heard the sound you've been talking about. I saw a figure like a woman, and I heard that laugh. It's like a high-pitched evil sound. 
Mom, that's exactly what I've been telling you about. I'm so sorry I didn't believe you. I didn't believe my daughter. I don't think I wanted to admit it because I was the one that was uh, gonna fix the whole thing. I was wrong. It was like such a rush of relief. Like she believed me. I knew she had heard the noise. What are we gonna do? I don't know, but I'm gonna figure something out. We're gonna be okay. But after that, it wasn't just me scared, it was her too. Now on a mission, Linda decides to lead her own investigation. I didn't know what to tell her. We were both scared to death. I needed to get to the bottom of this. Hey, Cecile. Oh, hey, Linda. How are you? I'm OK. Is, is there something wrong? I have a kind of strange question. Sure. This is going to sound weird, but you know if anything strange has ever happened in my house? Strange? Yeah, like, has anyone died or anything like that? Not that I know of. It was only built a few years ago. Right. Yeah, OK. Is, is everything OK? Yeah, everything's fine. It's totally fine. See you later. OK, sure. I went to all my neighbors and asked them if they had heard anything. And nobody knew anything. Still, I felt better because my mom was trying to figure out what it was. Desperate for any kind of explanation, Linda does research on the history of the house and the neighborhood. But she comes up empty. With nothing to report back to her daughter, Linda feels defeated. We were both a nervous wreck. The whole thing was very upsetting because I was under pressure to explain it, and I couldn't. Kara begins spending as much time outside the house as possible, often escaping to the pool. I just didn't feel comfortable anywhere in my house. It was like, I was like being followed wherever I went. I was definitely nervous, and I felt watched. Kara Dravis has been seeking to escape from an unworldly presence. Didn't want to be in the house. I would sit in the garage or I would go to the pool. Come on, it's time for bed. 
I don't want to go in there. I'm going to protect you. I'm going to find a solution. I don't want to live here anymore. Kara. All of a sudden, my headboard started shaking, aggressively shaking. was upset. She just was freaked out. <laughs> my, my head board just started shaking like crazy, and then I, I felt something grab my arm. I thought I was not going to survive in the house. I had no idea what was going on. <laughs> Come on. You're sleeping. <laughs> I decided she wouldn't sleep in her own room, and she won't be in our house alone. Over the next few weeks, Linda is at a loss for what to do. I basically felt like I'm going to sell the house. We have to get out of here. We cannot live like this. A friend puts her in contact with a well-known clairvoyant. At this point, Linda is willing to try anything. My friend said, you need to call Jean Marie. She's pretty amazing. So I put all my hope into this one woman just to come here and tell me what's going on. Thank you for coming. We've been so scared. It's OK. I'm here to help. When I walked into her house, Linda, she was so frightened, and she didn't know what to do. Jean Marie's soft-spoken, but immediately you like her. She's just full of love. She's calm. She's serene. As a clairvoyant, Jean Marie has the ability to see spirits and receive their messages. Spirits don't say words necessarily. Most of it's a different way of communicating. And what would come was a feeling. It must be Kara. Hi. Is it okay if I take a look around? Sure. As she walks through the house, Jean Marie finds herself drawn to Kara's room. Standing there, it was so strong, and I felt a woman there. She needed to communicate. The spirit that was there, or the woman, she was from India. She was very, very dark skinned and just so huddled up. Since she was a young child, she lived on the streets, and she'd never gone inside of a building. She didn't go inside of places because she wasn't allowed to. Hey! 
Get out of here, you dirty beggar! Go! Get out! Please, sir. I have nowhere else to go. He said, get out of here! There's no room for garbage like you! Get out! Please, please, sir. Put your hands on me! You filthy beggar! You were born a beggar! And now, you will die begging! Beg! For more haunting, visit TLC.com. Clairvoyant Jean Marie is receiving a horrific vision from the spirit haunting the Dravis home. Like you, get out! Please, sir. Put your hands on me. I felt the fear. Then all of a sudden, I, I could physically, uh, I could swallow. I was like I was drowning. You beggar! You were born a beggar, and now you will die begging. Are you okay? I saw her. Who? The woman haunting your home. Her name's Gia. She was murdered. Murdered? I want to get in touch with her again to find out why she's here. was able to see her and communicate with her. Gia was like, oh, you can help me to tell her. That was huge. I saw her again. She was in a marketplace. She was watching you, Linda. Oh, this is so beautiful. Miss Linda, Miss Linda! Bravi. You were with a boy. He was in some kind of trouble. She keeps saying the word Delhi. Delhi. Like New Delhi. That's one of my usual stops. How did she get here? How many times have I told you no begging? Huh? He's not begging, he's with me. She saw you stand up for the boy. Ravi. She saw me with Ravi in India. Now you want to run away from me? Stop it! She said that you saved him. And she said that when she saw you do that, she wanted to come to you. Jean Marie said she liked my maternal energy. So she followed me. It, it shed a lot of light on it. But what does she want? If she's a good ghost, why does she keep frightening us? She even grabbed my arm. Gia oh, doesn't mean to scare you. She's never had anyone stand up for her in her life. Most spirits can't control how they interact with the human world. She scared them and she felt terrible about it. It was never to hurt people. There was nothing in her that could hurt people. What she wants most is to be a part of your family, to be loved. She wants to stay and live here with both of you to protect you. It made me feel more comfortable that I knew she wasn't there to hurt me. Jean Marie said, you're, you're gonna be safe. Like, Guy is not gonna let anything happen to you. She's gonna be there. I was kind of like, oh, I have like a bodyguard. This is kind of cool. I felt compassion for her. How could I say, 
be gone, be gone. That's what she had her whole life. I was very anxious to have her there, but I was not anxious to the point of throwing her out. Kara and Linda follow Jean Marie's instructions on how to make Gia feel at home. Here, sweetie, will you light that side? Huh. Jean Marie said, make her a little spot because all she wants you to do is welcome her in. So we sit on the floor, and I'm thinking, oh, God, this is weird. But to me, it made sense. So you think this is really going to work? I do. These are all things from her culture to make her feel as welcome as possible. It looks great, Mom. I think so, too. to see her, I could see she had changed. She had positive emotions. She loved them. They, they had actually accepted her. Eventually, Linda and Kara find peace with Gia, but the experience has changed them forever. I just think that it's, it's like refreshing to know that this isn't it. There's more. After you die, I don't believe that's the end. To somebody who doesn't believe, this is what I would tell them. I'm not sure I believed either. What I would say is I think they're wrong, just like I was wrong. And that's what I've learned. There's a lot more going on than meets the eye. man in love becomes the target of a deadly spirit. Ah. It was five marks, like somebody had really dug in and scraped down. Determined to keep him in its clutches. This entity was attached to Charles. She was very jealous, very possessive, and very angry. <laughs> He searches his family's tragic past for clues. My grandfather mentioned something like brujeria, which is like Spanish for witchcraft. Now, he must destroy the evil before it destroys him. In America, there is real evil. It lurks in the darkest shadows and in our most ordinary towns between the worlds we see Someone's in my room. and the things we fear. There are doors when they are opened. Nightmares become reality. Just north of the trendy and fast-paced city of Miami, rests the tranquil seashore of Hollywood, Florida. It's definitely a place to be. It's so relaxing and you get away from everyday life and it's so awesome just walking by the beach. I, I love it. In 2010, Charles Gonzalez invites his new girlfriend, Hannah, a single mother of two, over for dinner. I met Hannah through a mutual friend of ours. Things were getting a little bit serious between us, so I didn't want her you know, to meet my mom. Ma, look who's here. Ah! <laughs> Hello. Oh, beautiful. So nice yeah, to for meet you. me? Thank you. Sit down, sit down. It's going to get cold. Gracias, mama. Ladies first. Thank you. My mom liked what she saw. She liked my mom. They got along pretty well, you know. It, it was... It was definitely a good day. Back in Bogota, we used to have these huge family dinners. And Mama would prepare this delicious feast. <laughs> I came from Bogota, Colombia. I was born there. It's always in my heart. You know, it's where I grew up. Well, tell me, what was it like? 
Uh, well, there were a lot of us. And we all lived in the same house, if you can believe that. I grew up with my mom, my grandfather, my grandma, my uncle, my aunt, cousins. Uh, it was a big family. Why? It's just a joke. OK, stop playing around, you two. Grandpa's coming home soon. Sorry. Hola, how are you? Hola. Hola. ¿Cómo están? Bien, ¿cómo te fue el día? Estuvo un poco caliente. A little bit hot. But it was good. Muy buen día. My grandfather, he did major projects all over the city, building homes. I never saw him resting. He was the head of household. He was the backbone of the family. I mean, he was such a presence to respect. Déjame ayudarte. Gracias. So, how do I look? Good. Like his grandfather, Charles's uncle Alfonso also played a big role in his life. My father died at a very young age, so he was the one that really kind of helped me grow up and, and, and tell me what I needed to know. To me, he was like my dad. He raised me. I looked up to him. All you need is just a dad. Trust me, ladies love it. My uncle's a very sharp man. He had that swag to him. He was a ladies' man. He was very classy. And yeah, it, girls sure loved him. <laughs> that I remember. Ay, ay, ay. Don't wait up. Such a shame we had to leave. Well, have you ever gone back? No. I miss the family, too. I think about the Alfonso Abuelo every day. In 1990, Charles's family suffered a series of tragedies, including the deaths of his uncle and grandfather. It's the year that I wouldn't wish to my worst enemy. My uncle was assassinated. He was murdered. Nobody really found out why, who did it. Then I had my grandfather pass away after that. My grandfather was the healthiest man you could find. He was not sick at all. He just passed away. Just like that, just that quick. Soon after, Charles and his mother moved to the United States in hopes of leaving the past behind. I don't cry, mommy. They're still here with us. Just because we cannot see them, they're still making sure we're okay. So I thought that went well? Yeah, I had a really great time tonight. <laughs> Your mom is so sweet. I knew you guys would hit it off. You know, I really loved hearing about your family in Bogota. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's just so sad hearing about all those deaths happening at the same time. It's like your family's, I don't know, cursed or something. <clears throat> Are you 
okay? Yeah. Yeah. I better get out of here. Told the babysitter I'd be home by 10. Okay. But I'll see you this weekend. Good night. Despite the years that have passed, childhood memories continue to haunt Charles. After my uncle died, I started seeing some pretty weird things in the house. I just kept hearing noises, something loud, bang, boom. Like, trying to get my attention. Right after his beloved uncle Alfonso was murdered in Bogota, Colombia, Charles Gonzalez began witnessing supernatural events. Flies were making some kind of shape, looking like a shadow, almost like a person. I couldn't believe it. I was like, it's not happening. After my uncle passed away, I was a little bit creeped out. People were saying around town that there was a curse on, put on him. Now, 20 years later, as an adult living in Hollywood, Florida, the past has mysteriously come back to haunt Charles. I just heard a loud noise, like when somebody hits something really hard. And I, I just remember just jumping out of bed and I was like, whoa. hearing like footsteps coming slowly towards me. Who's in there? <laughs> that night, that's when I knew, okay, I'm not alone. There's definitely something here with me. For the first time in years, Charles has had a paranormal encounter. He contacts his good friend Pedro Rivera, who recently began working with the Paranormal Consulting Agency. 
Pedro was involved with a paranormal group. And I was like, he's gonna know somebody that can help me. Hey, man. Pedro, hey, man. What's, What's up? going Pasa? on? You want Hannah break up or something? What? No. No, no, it's not that. No, we're doing great. Charles is a good friend of mine. I've known Charles since middle school. What's up, then? I had an encounter last night. Something I hadn't felt since Michael's funeral in Colombia. About a year ago is when Charles shared some stories about his childhood. You mean it was supernatural? And we have long conversations about ghosts and apparitions and poltergeists and all that. I just, I don't know what's going on, man, after all these years. You know, there's got to be a reason, right? There's got to be a reason. Whatever it was, it got my attention. I felt like if it was spirit, it was maybe trying to watch out for me, perhaps. Don't worry, all right? We'll figure something out. Pedro asks the psychic medium on his paranormal team for help. She requests minimal information, just Charles's first name. Being a physical medium, I usually can feel a, a spirit. Telepathically, they speak to me. There was a small Spanish man. He had a bandana or like a handkerchief around his neck and was in like work clothes. He was saying to me, something's buried, something's buried. And he was just very adamant about it. This is about whatever was buried. an encounter with an eerie presence. Who's in there? Even though I was alone, I felt something like the chills would go through my body. And the last time I ever experienced that was back in Colombia, right after my uncle passed away. Um, I didn't know if it was paranormal. I didn't know what to call it. I just knew that it wasn't right. I knew it wasn't something that was supposed to be happening. I was really worried, and I needed to get something done and, and done ASAP. Charles Gonzalez seeks help from a paranormal investigative team. One of the members, a psychic medium, receives a message from a mysterious spirit. It can be very confusing as far as when a spirit trying to tell you something, because the message isn't always exactly clear. All I knew that it was, it was a warning.
That's psychic. She described my grandfather to a T. She described this man exactly as my grandfather would look. It's a strong, short man, gray hair, rough hands. Like he's been working. The way he was dressed, color handkerchief that, that he's wearing, that's my grandfather. What else did she say? She thinks he wanted to relay some kind of warning, that he's trying to protect you somehow. She kept saying it had to do with something that was buried. Do you have any idea what he's talking about? Suddenly, Charles recalls something from his childhood. A clay figure. An object he found after his uncle Alfonso was murdered. Charles, what are you doing? Ma said to help out. You're always playing around. So? What's the problem with that? Charles, find something to do. <sighs> do you always have to push me around? I'm just trying to have fun. Jeez. Wow. Oh, no. No, 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 no. No. We grabbed this thing out of the dirt, and it was made out of clay and just looked like a, like a person. He had a face and everything. And carved in it are his uncle Alfonso's initials. Where did you get this? It was in there. It was buried in the planter. It was just kind of weird that this thing would be buried in so deep and in, in a pot full of dirt. Why would it have my uncle's initials in it? Clean up this mess now. La Bruja. My grandfather mentioned something like Santeria or Brujeria, which is like Spanish for witchcraft. What is that thing? I want you to stay outside. Why? What's wrong? Go! Charles's grandfather heads for the family prayer room. It was common, you know, for family to have their prayer room. If anyone of our family passed away, they would pray for the souls to make sure that they were, you know, doing okay wherever they were. Right, Somebody went in there and just started smashing everything, glass everywhere. Those crucifixes were upside down. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> there was a picture of my uncle. Charles Gonzalez has been haunted by something evil, and his past may hold the answers.
after the murder of his uncle in Bogota, Colombia. Charles, then just a boy, unearthed a mysterious clay object outside his home, bearing his uncle's initials. Only to then discover the family prayer room destroyed. and his uncle's photo defaced. It's like a bunch of needles going through his face. This is very disturbing. My grandfather, he was pretty, pretty shaken. He fell to the floor and he started crying. No, he was me, no. I had never seen him cry before. <laughs> the clay object appears to be the source of what happened in the past. My grandfather believed it was created by black magic and it has something to do with my uncle's death. Wow, that's intense. With the shrine and the upside down crosses and all that, it had to do with something evil. Did they ever find out who did it? No. My mom kept me away from all that stuff. So I never really knew what was going on. Then about a year later, we moved. What happened to the clay object? I don't know. My grandfather probably destroyed it. It's so weird. Why would he be trying to warn me about it after all these years? My grandfather is trying to tell me that, you know, be careful, you're being protected, but there's something going on. Maybe I should pay attention. There's more to his uncle's story. One afternoon, Charles meets up with his girlfriend, Hannah, but he can't stop thinking about the past. There was definitely a feeling in the air that it wasn't, something just wasn't 100% right. I was very kind of on edge. My girlfriend noticed too, you know, she's like, you know, you're not really being yourself. I feel like we haven't hung out in a while. You seem stressed. You know you can tell me anything. If something's wrong, I want to help. There's nothing wrong. Actually, I'm just happy that you're here with me. I just wish you didn't have to go home. Well, kids are staying at my mom's tonight, so I'm all yours. Are you? I was like, oh, go away, it's not a big deal. Everything's fine.
it felt like like somebody had walked through, like somebody had been there. It made my the hairs all over my body stand in one end. Gonzalez has just been attacked. I felt just this intense burning sensation in my leg. Ah. How did that happen? It was five marks, like somebody had really dug in and scraped down. Do you have any bandages? Oh. Grab some peroxide. Hannah? What's wrong? She lifts up her wrist and shows me, and there is the same scratch that I had on my leg on her wrist. Oh, my God. Charles's worst fear is confirmed. Some kind of evil spirit is after him, and now his girlfriend. She was upset. She was shaken up. What is going on, Charles? I need you to tell me the truth. You remember that night you met my mom, right? The, the story uh, about the curse? Uh, I don't know if it's something something supernatural or, 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 or what, what's going on. I don't know. If this can attack me, what about my kids? I can't let anything happen to them. The news is too much for his girlfriend to handle. She had never had to deal with any situation like that in her life before. I'm sorry. Hannah. Ultimately, the couple parts ways. It was hard for me to let her go, but I felt that it was better not to have her than to bear with the pain of, God forbid, something happening to her. Uh, I wasn't going to be able to live with myself if that happened. I need help. I need someone to come and tell me what's happening because this isn't right. Once again, Charles turns to his friend Pedro. Once it starts to get physical, it's when you have to react. Now there's action to be taken. He immediately calls upon his fellow team members, psychic medium Desiree Page and lead investigator Rich Valdez. Have you ever been involved in the occult in any way? What do you mean, like, like witchcraft? No. Never. What about that clay object you found back in Colombia? told me it was buried. And in Desiree's vision, your grandfather was trying to warn you about something buried, right? Remember? It even had something that looked like your uncle's initials on it. Yeah, but what does that have to do with me? Someone placed a curse on that object with the intent to hurt your uncle. And now, whatever negative entity that was attached to the object is after you. Whatever was going on in Charles's life at the time was probably correlated with the object that he had unburied as a child. Maldito! The transference of energy, especially when it comes to a curse, has no time. It can happen immediately. It can happen a few weeks, a few days, a few years. What may have triggered it finally with Charles is he finally reached that point of complete happiness. And that is when this negative spirit actually started manifesting. And before you knew it, his life was in shambles. Still, Charles doesn't know why anyone would place a curse on his uncle. 
I don't understand. Why would someone want to hurt him? Did he have any enemies? No. Everyone loved Tio Alfonso. A scorned lover, perhaps? That's when it automatically sparked. The light bulb went off. It was her. Anyone was still up. Uh, remember Elena? The pleasure. I know who she is. And she's not welcome in this home. There was talk in the town that she could have been possibly a witch and that she could have been practicing witchcraft. My grandfather did not like her. He did not like her at all. He was pretty angry and told her, You have to leave. Don't come by here. You're not welcome here or even close to, to any of us in the family. Come on, papi. You can't be serious. She's got you under some kind of spell, and I won't allow it. Do you understand me? I won't allow you to ruin my family. I remember him telling my uncle, you either pick her or you pick us. It's probably the best that you go. We can work this out later. You coward! told me you loved me. Lies. And you, you think you're better than me? <laughs> you have no idea what I'm capable of, old man. This isn't the last you've seen of me. woman invoked a curse in order to exact revenge. You think it's so easy to get rid of me? I'll never let you free. Just know this, mi amor. You and your family will pay dearly. Okay, so now what? Huh? We have to break the curse or the entity will continue to haunt you. I felt just like a negative energy. Visit TLC.com. As a young boy in Colombia, Charles Gonzalez discovered a clay object etched with his uncle's initials. Charles suspects it was created by his uncle's scorned lover, who placed a curse on him and his family. Maldito! She wanted to hurt him. She wanted to damage him. She wanted to hurt the family. And we all felt it. It's now years later. A psychic medium senses that the entity attached to the object has set its sights on its next victim, Charles. Are you okay? It looked like a woman. She was very jealous, um, very possessive, and very angry. This entity was attached to Charles. The entity. It's, it's female by nature, and she wants you all to herself. She's the reason why you and your girlfriend broke up. 
We have to move now. The future depends on it. In order to break the entity's attachment to Charles and end the curse, the team brings in their occult expert, Angel Garcia. It appears that she was practicing brujeria, which is similar to santeria. And she was creating objects and doing things just to control. Do you have the replica? Yeah. Because Charles does not have the original clay object, he was instructed to recreate it. We needed to have something he can hold, something he can see. It's time. Please, step forward. Angel begins a ritual to end the curse by pouring a salt ring around Charles. Salt has always been known through the years to be protective against anything occult, dark, scary. The ring of salt is a protective circle. So the last thing you need is somebody to pick this up and now carry this burden of, I have the curse with me. So people needed to feel protected. They needed to feel that they were in a sacred space. It was important for all of us to be there during the ritual because we needed everyone's energy. We were all just very on edge and very much wanting to help him and, and get rid of this for him. This isn't something that one person could have handled by themselves. The entity didn't show me itself that night but I could still feel that it was with Charles. It was definitely still there. Santum uh, I stood in the middle of that circle and I prayed to my uncle and my grandfather to give me the strength to get rid of this thing, to send it away where it would not hurt anyone. I break the curse cast upon me. And my tío Alfonso Ferdinand Gonzalez and the future members of my familia. And I grabbed this figure and I crushed it in my hands and I threw it to the sea. and I felt the biggest weight come off immediately. The curse has been broken. You could feel the energy flow different, and it was all stemming from him. He broke this energy, physically, feeling he was released. All he did was shift his energy to now, I'm in charge. I'm the one who's protected. I'm the one who destroyed this, and let this be. Ever since the ritual, Charles is confident he's free of the curse. Life is good today. Life is, life is awesome. And I feel like I'm back to myself again. I can be happy. Paranormal to me now is something so natural, so common. It's like oxygen and water. It, to me, it's very real. If anyone says that it's not real, it's because they're ignorant. Or they haven't been through it themselves. And I hope they, they don't go through it themselves. It's pretty disturbing. It's scary. I don't want to wish that upon nobody. hobby turns obsessive. Look, aren't they beautiful? They're kind of weird. The masks definitely creep me out. I didn't like them at all. Bizarre things begin happening. 
the eyes were missing. The straw was sticking out of its belly and out of its eyes. There is a spirit inside waiting to come out. Voodoo kept coming up. Mom, it's the mask. And I thought, maybe there's something wrong with them. I was terrified. These masks, they're trying to kill me. <laughs> In America, there is real evil. It lurks in the darkest shadows and in our most ordinary towns. Between the worlds we see... Someone's in my room. ...and the things we fear, there are doors when they are opened. Nightmares become reality. In November 2007, Bob Griffith brings home an important package for his wife. just happened? Hello? Oh, hey, babe. I was just almost in an accident. Shortly after he started driving, the gas pedal stuck on the car, and he could not slow down. So he had to jam on the emergency brake uh, to stop the vehicle. No, I'm, I'm OK. No, I'll be fine. Let me just see what's wrong with this. Yeah, I got it. I'll be home soon. But love you too. We had the car checked out, and there was nothing wrong with it. When we found out that the car was fine, we just brushed it off and forgot about it. You know, we just thought it was one of those things. In 2007, we moved into our dream home in Desert Hot Springs, just north of Palm Springs. And it was a very nice home. I lived there with my husband, Bob, and my 12-year-old son, Greer. Hello. Hey. Oh, there it is. I'm so excited. I wish you were as excited to see me as you are to get this box. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you OK? How's the car? I'm OK. The car's OK. okay. As long as you have this, we're all OK. I am just really excited. Do you want to see? Come on, I'll show you. My husband had a sense of humor. I've been waiting for this. And he was a good father. Mom, what did you buy now? <laughs> I will show you. Greer is smart. He's so intelligent. He is a great kid. I collect antiques. And as a housewarming gift for myself, I bought these two Haitian masks that I found on the internet. They were solid mahogany, and the craftsmanship was just amazing. One of them had the appearance of a gazelle. The other one had human features. Look, aren't they beautiful? They're kind of weird. When I saw the masks, I sort of got a very eerie feeling, almost paranoid. I remember when I told my mom that I didn't like them at all. And she insisted that they're going to look great on the wall. Oh, stop. I think they're amazing. Hey, buddy, what do you say? Let's go get some takeout. We use your mom's car. <laughs> all right, give me something good. We'll be back soon. I was very excited when the masks got there, and I hung them on their own special wall.
Over the next few weeks, Jeanette and Greer settle into their home while Bob is away on business. My husband was an RV salesman. Because of his job, he would be gone for two weeks, maybe a month at a time for RV shows. And he would go and sell at these shows. So it was Greer and I alone in the house. Hey, bud. Hey. Brought you something to drink. Thanks. How's it going? Not too well. Why? I can't figure out this one question. OK. Let's see here. This one? Yeah. Mm. OK. So you're just going to multiply, right? And then subtract. So it's going to be x minus 2. I still don't get it. Nah, you will. When's Dad going to be home? I don't know, bud. Tomorrow, maybe? What was that? Whoa! What is it? Is that a bird? Oh, man. The bird that we saw it was just a little black bird. You know, it, was, it wasn't uh, a raven. It was smaller. Poor guy. When we saw the dead bird, we thought it just hit the back door and, and died. Aw. Oh, um, let's, let's go inside the house. It was a little weird, and it was sad, but birds fly into windows. We just dismissed it. You know, we cleaned it up and dismissed it. One night, I was in my room. I had just started falling asleep, and I heard tapping on my window. I definitely had a sense of paranoia, like somebody was watching me. Twelve-year-old Greer Griffith has been getting an eerie feeling in his new house. When I was walking down the hall, I heard the creaking and, and that same noise from outside.
I looked behind me and, and saw nothing. After not seeing anything, I just... I wanted to brush it off, so I just sort of let go of it. Greer and I were playing in the backyard, and we came in, and we shut the door. <laughs> You're just getting too fast. I know. We can't keep up with you anymore. What's that? Glass. And there was glass all over the dining room. What the heck? What broke the glass? Be careful. OK. It made a trail of 25 feet. It just made no sense at all. The trail of glass definitely seemed to be placed in this line. And then I noticed that the glass went through the dining room, into the living room, and around the corner. I just knew something wasn't right. What was it? I don't know. What? What is it? When I got down close to it, I noticed that there was something really wrong with this bird. It's freaky. Look at its eyes. It wasn't just the eyes were missing. It was that there was actual very large holes. It was stuffed with uh, straw coming out of it. It was very disturbing. The straw was sticking out of its belly. That actually was pretty frightening because something like that would have to be put there somehow. That's just not normal. Is this your idea of some kind of sick joke? No, I, I would never do anything like this. What if someone's messing with us? Who would do something like that? Who would? One of the many thoughts I had uh, was that somebody was messing with us. Um, I, at the time, didn't have a clue who that could be. I don't know. It, it wasn't me. I'll go get a bag or something to put it in. I really didn't know what to think of the stuffed bird, other than it had to have been put here. But I couldn't figure out who would do that. It, it just didn't make any sense. I. I Honestly, I didn't know what to think about it. But that was the first time that I started feeling uncomfortable in the house. Over the next few weeks, with Jeanette's husband on the road again for work, Jeanette and Greer make sure to keep the house under lock and key.
Strange things are happening in Jeanette Osborne's dream home. I had 10 or 15 crickets coming up out of my shower drain. I, I was more than a little freaked out. I don't like bugs. I was terrified. Did you do this? No. Well, was it like this when you came through here? I don't think so. What in the world? It's food. I noticed that there was sort of like a trail of dry goods. That went out of the kitchen into the dining room and stopped at the wall, stopped right below the masks. Mom. Mom. It's the masks. The trail is leading to the masks. Oh, honey, it's just a coincidence. No, it's not. What else could it be? The path from the dry goods cabinet to the masks was about seven or eight feet. And even if it had just fallen directly out of the cupboard, there's no possible way that it could have made a trail. I told you they were creepy from the day you got them. You should get rid of them. They are not creepy. They're beautiful. I would try and explain to her, like, you do understand that all of this is probably because of those masks, right? And of course, she would try to brush it off. You're overreacting. Why won't you listen to me? They're beautiful. They're mine, and I love them. And they're going to stay right there on the wall. Over the next few weeks, Jeanette often finds herself admiring the masks. I know that they had a hold over me. I have other masks and, and other antiques. And of course, like any collector, I love them. You know, they, they make me happy. These were different. I wasn't willing to take them down. Jeanette's growing obsession takes a turn, and she buys even more masks. Honey? Jeanette? Don't you think you're spending a little too much time on this hobby? Too much time? No, I like them. You don't know what you're talking about. Look, I've got to go. I love you. I'll be back soon. I had an unnatural attachment to these things. There was no explanation for it. My dad worked a lot, and during this time, he was actually leaving for weeks or maybe a month at a time. 
with that happening, he couldn't be sort of like uh, a helping hand on my part with persuading my mom to get rid of these masks. When my mom wouldn't believe me about the masks, it made me feel alone. Twelve-year-old Greer has just been attacked by an unseen entity. It felt like somebody had, had hit me. Mom! What? Mom! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Calm down, calm down. Uh, what? 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 Greer came uh. running into my room, and he said that something, that something was in his room. I was sleeping in my room, and something hit me in the forehead. Let me see this. He had fingerprints on his forehead, like this. It was frightening. Oh my god. Mom, it's a stupid mask. The mask, career, that's ridiculous. You aren't listening to me. Look, I will figure this out. Okay? Okay. You wanna stay in here tonight? I definitely think it made things a lot more real for both my mother and I. Jeanette can no longer deny the connection between the haunting and the masks. I started trying to research the masks. I knew nothing about them other than they came to me in a box from Port-au-Prince in Haiti. Voodoo kept coming up. And I thought, I honestly don't know. Um, is it possible? Part of me was saying, well, maybe there's something wrong with them. Maybe they're causing this. Jeanette invites a voodoo priest into her home. So over here is um, where we found the trail of food, just lined up through the kitchen. I'm Bloody Mary. Voodoo queen of New Orleans and a voodoo historian. On many occasions, I'm called in as an occult expert when someone doesn't understand what's going on in their house. And here are the masks. The voodoo priest that Jeanette called came over the house to assess the situation. These two have a strong spirit within them. They do? Many people consider voodoo to be the oldest religion that exists. It's a nature-based religion. So everything is about the spirit world. In fact, the word voodoo translates to mean spirit. Trance dance possession is a part of a voodoo ceremony. It would start with offerings to the spirits.
And eventually, to build energy, they're dancing. You're wanting to become the spirits. If you get possessed, you may go put on the clothing that is attractive to that particular spirit. You may put on a wig, you may put on a mask. These masks were used during ritual ceremonies in my fate. The more and more those things are used, the more and more they're embedded with the spirit itself. What kind of rituals? It's hard to tell, but they are looking for their guide. What do you mean? The spirits, the mass, they are hungry. So what do we do? I mean, I don't want to get rid of them, but I want them to be at peace with my family. You need to feed them. Leave out gifts for them. In Jeanette's case, there were crickets and there were birds as well as food that were kind of brought to her. That was a hint that they needed to be fed. I can show you. Are we in danger? No. I'll give you all the tools you need. But first, let us perform a protection ceremony. The spirits need to understand who is in control. OK. After the protection ceremony, the house did feel better. And we started putting food offerings in a bowl under the masks. I, I didn't know if it would work or not, but I was willing to try anything. is terrified for her life. It was a nightmare. But I knew what I was experiencing was very real. But in spite of her fear, her obsession with the masks defies logic. I didn't want to get rid of them. I, w I was attached to them. But I kind of knew that it had something to do with them. It absolutely had to. That summer, Jeanette finds herself alone in the house. Greer leaves to visit his older brother in Kansas. You got everything. We are going to get this worked out, OK? Everything's going to be fine. I love you. I love you, too. Here's your stuff. OK, buddy. You ready to go? Yep. OK. Meet me in the car. All right. What's more, Jeanette's husband has no choice but to take a new job out of state. In 2008, 
Finances were bad for everyone. A lot of the RV stores closed in Southern California. And uh, my husband had to find, you know, work within his industry where he could. It'll just be a few months and I'll be back, okay? Love you. The lowest moment was definitely leaving my mom to deal with it on her own because my dad was still working. I got to the point where I knew I had to do something and I thought I need to reach out to somebody, I need to get some help. Desperate, Jeanette contacts a haunted object specialist. My name is John Safis. I've been a paranormal investigator for 43 years. Would you like to have a seat? Sure, that'd be fine. Thank Would you. you like some sugar or anything? Black is fine, thank you. Well, you've seen the masks. Mm -hmm. I've tried to get rid of them, but I, I, I want the activity to stop. But I don't want them destroyed. I just... Um, I just can't let them go. Well, I've been studying this, and there's definitely some negative energy with these masks. Jeanette didn't want to hear that. She didn't want to accept the fact that it could have been something on a negative level. Jeanette, can we remove them? No, I don't want to take them down. Can we at least cover them up then? I was still so attached to them, but he just felt, you know, that it had to be them and that if I wasn't going to take them down, I at least needed to cover them. So I did. A lot of times when these items are covered, it can help to calm down a lot of the energy. These two right here. Okay, well, these work? They work just fine. Just cover it up. Jeanette, if the activity continues, you're going to have to remove these masks. I understand. Can you show me the rest of the house? Jeanette and I walked through the entire house, and I was reciting several different prayers. This helps to break negative energy. I felt good about that. I was hopeful this is going to help. Things are going to get better. Over the next few weeks, while Jeanette doesn't experience any activity, she becomes further and further withdrawn. I was alone. It was maddening. And there wasn't anything I could do about it. I think it affected me psychologically. It was just like my nightmare. No, 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 oh my God. Ah. And I began hearing pops coming from under the floor, but they were a deep tone. In my mind, this was the foundation popping, and I was absolutely terrified. Jeanette is out of options. She must get rid of the masks. <laughs> The activity was building. It was chaos in the house, and I knew they had to go. John, he said I could send them to him because he could keep them safe, and he could study them, and he would keep them from destroying somebody else's lives, wreaking havoc in them. I took the masks that were in the box, and I put them in the back seat of my car. Oh. 
And I got pinned against the, the steering wheel. And my knees were all jammed up in front, and I was out in the intersection, stuck against the steering wheel. I was terrified. I absolutely thought, and these masks are going to get me killed in my car. They're trying to kill me. For more a haunting, visit TLC.com. Jeanette Osborne has been terrorized by what she believes to be masks possessed by evil spirits. <laughs> the activity was escalating. My dream house was absolutely becoming a nightmare. I was afraid to be in it. The masks had to go. I was stuck against the steering wheel out in the intersection. I really thought I could be killed. I was going to get hit. And I almost got hit by another car who was doing 40 miles an hour on the big cross street. I got out, had to go out my passenger door to get out. The box was gone. It was just gone. No, 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 no. I was surprised. I just couldn't believe it. Fearing for her safety, Jeanette refuses to go back in the house. That was our dream house. It was the nicest place we've ever lived, but we lost everything in that house. And it almost tore our family apart. When we moved, financially it was a huge loss, but family, that, that's what was important, you know, to get our family back together. We were able to return to a normal life. The family eventually settles in Arizona. My husband passed away last year. And you know, it's a horrible thing to, to lose your father, to lose your husband. But in a way, it's brought us closer. But things are getting better. I'm living with uh, my mom. We're just trying to do everything we can to keep each other afloat. We're definitely closer because of it. As for the masks... My son was right. You know, what he felt about these masks from day one, from the minute he saw them, he was right. The masks definitely creeped me out. I really just didn't want them in the house at all. I definitely think it was weird that they just went missing, as far as my beliefs. Voodoo is one of those things that I always felt like you just shouldn't uh, mess with unless you're experienced in that sort of religious practice. I don't collect masks anymore. In fact, I'm very careful what I bring into my house at all. I absolutely think they're out there looking for another family, another person, and I think whoever comes across these things. Mom, 
mom is going to feel that attraction to him, is going to be drawn to them. Jeanette, she called me hysterical. And she was saying, John, the box is gone. They just totally disappeared. That told me right then and there, whatever was attached with these two particular masks was extremely powerful. And they did not want Jeanette shipping them off to me. It does bother me. Am I concerned that they might show up in another thrift store or they might show up in a tag sale someplace and wreak havoc for somebody else? Absolutely. What's even more interesting is where are they now? And who will be calling next?